are watching Darasa Online. Hello, welcome to Darasa Online. My name is Mr. Kileo Abubakar Davidson. I am a geography teacher. Uh, today we are going to learn about simple survey and map making and we will focus more on its subtopic of uh, leveling procedures. Okay, what is leveling? Uh, leveling refers to the type of survey method which aim is to determine the elevation between points on the ground. Uh, the aim of uh, leveling survey is to check the difference in height uh, normally from the fixed point uh, or known point from the mean sea level. So the point is the aim, the actual aim or the, 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 the aim of um, doing what we call the leveling survey is to determine the exact height of elevation between different points on the ground. So uh, we have the main equipment used uh, in leveling. That's why we call it leveling survey, see? Like the other type of survey, we may call it, for instance, a plane table survey because it uses a plane table as its main instrument. Or we may call, it, we may call it, um, uh, type of survey, maybe um, the chain or tape survey. Why? Because it uses chain or tape measure, see, as its main equipment. So uh, in our today's lesson, um, we call it leveling survey because it uses leveling stuff as its main what? Main instrument. So let's see some of the equipments, some of the equipment used in leveling. Equips use the in leveling. See, one is leveling stuff. As I said, we call it the leveling survey because we use the leveling stuff as the main what? Main equips. So what is leveling stuff? Leveling stuff we refer to the stuff, we refer to the metal made stuff of either four meter to 4.5 meter long. It is a stuff uh, like this one, as you can see in my image right here, we have what we call the leveling stuff. As you can see, we have a person, this, this man is standing, holding the leveling stuff. So uh, metal made stuff of either four uh, meter to 4.5 meter long, uh, and it is got uh, colored and graduated at equal interval in either millimeter, centimeter, or feet. This stuff we call it the leveling stuff. There are other, uh, we have the other instrument called the spirit level. Uh, for instance, this one, as you can see right here, we may, I mean, we may, it can be either the Babto tube or the theodolite. This is what we call the leveling instrument, and we have the leveling stuff over there. So the point is, we use the stuff and the spirit level is the main instrument. I mean, we use the leveling stuff as the main instrument, and the other instrument which we maybe use it more, uh, or we need it as much as we need the leveling stuff in it. Uh, calculating the height during leveling, we need this one. We call it the spirit level. Example spirit level, as I said, we have the Babton tube or the theodolite. So let's see what are the uses of these two main instruments right here. Uh, we normally use this one, the theodolite or the spirit level, to read, to take the readings from the leveling stuff. And then we use the leveling stuff to give out the readings, see? So that they can be taken by the spirit level. So we said we use leveling stuff or the usage of the leveling stuff is to produce the readings, either the backside or the foresight reading. While the usage of the spirit level is to read the readings to the or from the leveling stuff. As you can see, let me illustrate right here. It means we have the leveling stuff. As I said, this is the metal stuff made. Uh, it is graduated uh, and painted color at the eco interval. So let's say this one, it is our leveling stuff. See right here? Let us assume this it is a ground. Then we may find right here, we have what we call the triple stand. The triple stand, it holds what we call the spirit level, the leveling instrument. So if we need to, to determine or to identify, let's say this point here, point A, is it rise or fall? It means we have to use the two equips. We have to use the stuff, leveling stuff, this one, the leveling what? the leveling stuff as well as the, the spirit level or the leveling instrument, this one. Spirit level or the leveling instrument. It means this one, it got the lens as well as the eyepiece right here. It, it got the eyepiece, you see, and it got what? The lens. 
to focus the object, I mean the readings to this leveling stuff. So the usage of this spirit level, it means it is to read the reading from the leveling stuff. Why the use of this leveling stuff is to give the readings to the spirit level. So we said we have the leveling stuff as the spirit level. So the use of the, of the leveling stuff, it means use the to produce. To produce the readings. Which, what type of readings am, am I talking about right here? I'm talking about either the back side, the back side and the foresight reading. The back side or the four, the foresight readings. Are we together? Then from there, after getting the back side or the foresight reading, it means we can be able to identify the elevation between the two points on the ground or more point on the ground. Are we together? So I insist this, it is instrument for taking the reading right here, while this, the leveling stuff, it gives out the readings, either the back side or the front side readings. Then from there, we have this one. The uh, tripod stand, it means the tripod stand, it is a metal made stand with three feet, as you can see. This one, it is used to hold, it is used to hold the speed level uh, to a required position or height during leveling surveying. Then from there, uh, uh, I, can, I can explain something which is very important. You have to make sure during leveling procedure, you have to make sure or oh, we need the following. In doing leveling, we need uh, two very important things. Uh, first, uh, in readings, in readings or taking the measurement, uh, we normally, we normally start Start from the from the datum point. You see, from the datum point, either the datum point, it is a point uh, which gives the base of the measurement. Normally, from the main sea level, uh, normally from the known point uh, on the ground from the main sea level. Then the this one we call it the datum point. So it is a point which gives us the base for the me for our measurement during leveling, and it is started from the known point where from the main sea level, and we call it the the datum line or the datum point. Then from there, uh, so in taking the measurement, you must determine or you must know what we call the fixed point reading on the ground. Fixed point reading on the ground, reading on the what? On the ground. And these fixed point readings on the ground, they are shown by either we may use or they may use benchmark. You see, either trigonometrical station, trigonometrical stations, or sometimes spot height. You see, to show the elevation from the mean sea level. So from this point, uh, as I said, it's very important to make sure. We have the datum points from the mean sea level, as well as uh, you have to find where there is benchmark, is a trigonometrical station or spot height, so that you can check your leveling stuff. You can put on top of the uh, datum points, then you can start your measurement from there. From there, then you can be able to find the, uh, the, the 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 points or the elevation you want from different points on the ground. As I said, let's say for instance, uh, let me explain. You see. Let's assume this is our ground. Our ground. Then we have the sea over there, as you can see right here. You see, uh, this is it is a sea. Then let's say this point right here. Let's say this is point A. Uh, it is 100 meter, as it said, from the from the main sea level. Then you want to determine this point here, the elevation of point B. It means first you have to determine the datum point. Then point A will be our datum points. Then from there you have to take your leveling stuff. See, then you will put on top of your datum points, which will be shown by either benchmark or training the station. Then from there it means you'll have to take, uh, let's say at this point B there is another leveling stuff right here. Then you have to take what? Your spirit level right now. Thereafter you will read the point, this one. This you call it your backside. Then you take the reading to this side. This you call your, your foresight. 
Then from this point, you'll be able to determine the height of point B from, from point A by using what? The, I mean, the leveling stuff as well as the, the spirit level. So later we will see how to find the position of point B in terms of its height by considering what we call the, the datum point uh, with the help of the what? The leveling stuff as well, what? The spirit level. So from there, uh, let's see the method of calculating height during leveling survey uh, procedures. It means method of calculating height, methods of calculating height. See? From the leveling survey, it means we have the rise and fall methods as well as the collimation method. So listen to me very carefully, student, please. We have two methods uh, of calculating the height of elevation between two or more points on the ground. So we have the rise and fall method as well as the collimation method. Then after uh, understanding these two methods, we will see how to, to, to to put data in, in the what we call the leveling booking sheet. Thereafter, we will discuss the advantages and the disadvantage of uh, leveling survey. Then we will see some, uh, I mean, model or uh, yeah, some model sample question uh, asking in relating to what to leveling survey. Then let's see the rise and fall method in surveying. How are we going to calculate the height by using the rise and fall methods? Okay, let's see. Um, the first method, the rise and fall method, the rise and fall, fall methods. So they said uh, in rise and fall method, in order to, to determine or to identify the elevations between two points, uh, we take the difference. We take the difference, the difference between the foresight and the back side. See? We take the difference between the foresight and back side. Then they say, if the difference is positive, then it indicates there is rise. You see? So in this method, it means if, it means if you want to take or to know if there is rise or fall between the two points, we have to take the difference between foresight reading and the backside reading. Then they say if the difference is positive, then it indicates there is rise between the two points. But if if the difference if the difference if the difference is negative, it means then it indicate it indicate there is fall between the two points. Are we clear? It means if we use the rise and fall method in determining or identifying the elevation between the two points, sometimes we may be asked to check, check if there is rise or fall between the two points. Which point is rise and which point is fall? It means we take the difference between the foresight and the backsight. Then if the difference is positive, then it indicates rise, and if the difference is negative, then it, it indicates what? The fall. Let's see an example right here. See? Uh, example. Example one, it means sometimes we may be given uh, the elevation between the two points. Let's take point A and point B. You see, we have point A. This is 100 meters from the mean sea level. Then we want to know the elevation of point B. See, let's say this is X. Then from there, we have what we call the leveling stuff. I mean, the, the spirit level between the leveling stuff. See, then let's say right here it is read 10. And right there, it, it really eight, you see? And let's say right now, uh, the question asks the check. Check if there is rise or fall. Check if there is rise or fall between point A and B. This is the first question. Uh, the second question, uh, the second question, this is, let's say this is our first question. Okay, let's say this, uh, this one is our first question, this one. Then the second question 
ask which point is rise and uh, which point uh, fall. Listen to me very carefully. It means sometimes we may use rise and fall. I mean, we, can, we use the rise and fall method to determine the elevation between the two points. We have point A and we have point B. Then we want to know, uh, I mean, we have the elevation of point A and we have the instrument readings. We have the backside right here, which is 10, and we have the foresight right here, which is 8. So the question asked, check if there is rise or fall between point A and B. So uh, by referring to our method, it means uh, to check if there is rise or fall between the two points, we take the difference between the foresight and backside. It means, uh, from there, it means solution, it means we take foresight minus backside reading, you see, we take foresight minus backside reading. We have the foresight is 8 minus backside reading, which is 10, as you can see right here. It means this one minus this one, you get minus, I mean, negative what? Negative 2. So, as you can see, the difference is negative, you see? So, by referring to our, 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 our method, it said, if the difference is negative, that in, then it indicates there is what? There is fall. So we have answered the first question that check if there is rise or fall between the two points, it means there is fall between the two points. Why? We take, because we have taken uh, the difference between uh, foresight and backsight and it gives us the negative two. So we are looking at the sign there. The sign is negative. Then we say, then there are, is a fall. There is a fall between point A and B. There is a fall between point A and point B. There is a fall between point A and point B. Why? Because we have taken the difference between the foresight minus the backside. So if we take 8 minus 10, we have obtained there, we have get negative 2. As the method explained that if the difference is negative, then there is a fall between the two points. And the question asked, check if there is rise or fall between the two points. It means right now, there is a fall between point A and point B. Then, the I mean, the second question asked, which point is rise and which point is fall? It means uh, we take the difference plus the fixed point reading on the ground. So we have the data, the datum point is 100. It means we take the different plus the datum points. This is our datum point. This is our fixed point reading on the ground. It means to take, I mean, to know which point is rise and which point is fall, it means we take the fixed point reading plus the difference. See? So the second question, the second question, it means we'll take the, the fixed point readings plus the difference. See? So the fixed point reading on the ground, it is 100. You see? 100. This is our fixed point reading plus the difference. The difference is minus 2. You see? And remember, this for, the fixed point reading is of point A. And right now, we want to know the second point, point B. You see? So to know the readings of point B, it means we take the fixed point reading plus the difference. Then we will get is equal to 90-80 meter because if like this one plus this one is equal to 90-80 meter. It means right now this one is point, e, point B. So as the question asks which point is rise and which point is fall, then you can, you can conclude by saying point A, point A is rise, you see, while point B is what? Is fall as you can see. This is 98. This is 100. Then from there, um, sometimes students may be given uh, a question similar to this uh, with different um, diagram. So make sure you do the mathematics and you follow the rules of uh, by referring to the formula or the first method is the way it explained. Do not see or look at the diagram and say, oh, maybe this point is rise or this point is, is fall. For instance, let's see, you may be given this. May be given uh, 
you may be given a very simple question. So you have to use the formula, example two. Example two. Uh, check if there is rise or fall between point A and B. Check if there is rise or fall. Then which point? Which point rise? and which point fall see which point rise and which point fall let's see let's take this one as the first question this one is the second question then let's say we have our diagram this one see tap like this one then we have the staff reading i mean the leveling stuff then we have another leveling stuff there this is point a let's say is 80 meter then we have um let's say point b y see then um we have the leveling instrument right here uh it read maybe um 10 uh and right here it need it read maybe no let's take the here it read maybe 12 and here 10 see <coughs> so um by looking right here in our diagram, uh, the question asks, check if there is rise or fall between point A and point B. We have point A, we have point B. Check if there is rise or fall between point A and point B. Uh, which, point, which point rise and which point is fall? So we have to, to, uh, to, to check which point is rise and which point is fall. So remember, we do not look on how we drew or drawn the diagram. It means we have to do the calculation. Remember, this is a survey, and we normally do the calculation by applying the method, you see? So, because sometimes a student may say, uh, as you can, I mean, observe or look carefully the diagram, right here, this point A, it is on the right side, while this point B is on the following side, you see? Sometimes you may get it wrong. So you have to make sure you calculate by using the formula as we have, as we have applied before. So, uh, it means to, Check if there is rise or fall between point A and point B. Then you, you take the foresight minus the backsight. Are we together? This is backsight, this is foresight. So the difference between the foresight and the backsight, it will tell you which point. So if there is rise or fall between point A and point B. So, I mean, the first question, it means we have the foresight, which is 10. It means foresight minus the, minus the backsight. So it means you take 10 minus, minus 12. It means you get is equal to negative 2. So it means because it is negative, then we say there is what? There is a fall. There is a fall between point A and point B, as I have explained earlier. Then we go which point is rise and which point is fall. It means you have to take um, the difference plus the fixed point reading given on the ground. It means we have the fixed point reading given. You see, that is the second question. To know which point rise and which point fall, we have to take the fixed point reading on the ground plus the difference. The fixed point reading on the ground is 80, see, plus the difference which is minus 2. Then you get is equal to 70, 80 meter. So because this, it was given as point A, and this one, it is point B. So you say point B, there is fall, while point A, there is what? There is rise. So you have to make sure you calculate, because sometimes they may uh, make the opposite of the diagram that I have drawn right here. Are we together? So do not uh, look the, on how the diagram was drawn. See, you have to make sure you use the formula given to calculate by following the procedure as I did before. Then from here, uh, uh, this is how we can calculate the, um, the elevation between the two points see, normally by using what to call the rise and fall method. So let's go to the second uh, method as the, I've explained earlier that there is what we call um, the collimation methods. Darasa online, shule nyumbani.
Okay, so uh, as I've said that uh, this is our second method and we call it, uh, I mean, the collimation method. So it's the collimation method, uh, it's also called, um, it's also called the instrument, the instrument Haiti method, uh, which is used to determine the elevation see, of more than two points. It means we use the collimation methods to determine the elevation of more than two points. We have seen in rise and fall uh, uh, in the earlier uh, method, we, we, we use it to determine the elevation between two points normally. But uh, in our, the collimation method or the instrument height method, we normally use uh, it to calculate the elevation of more than two points. We, you can have three, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see how are we going to use the collimation method uh, to calculate the elevation of different points. Uh, by applying the following uh, method, we have to know different uh, concepts uh, regarding the diagram that will be given, okay? So let's take, take an example, see? We will have the first, um, the first leveling stuff, for instance. Let's say this is as a land. Then we will have point A. As I said, this will be our datum point right here. Let's say we have given 100 meter from the mean sea level. Then we'll have another, oh, you'll see the second leveling stuff. Let's say this is point B all together. Then you'll see another leveling stuff, you see? Then thereafter, you'll see the leveling, and the mini leveling instrument right here. Then you may be seeing, um, another leveling stuff, etc., etc. Then you'll see another what? Instrument level, etc., like this. And we have different points. C, this is D, this is E, and this is F. Listen to me very careful. And sometimes you found that you, you have just given this one. One point is the known point. So how are you going to determine the elevation of B, C, D, E, and F? It means... If you want to determine uh, the elevation of B, C, D, E, and point F, you have to use what to call the height instrument, I mean the instrument height method or the collimation method. You, fi you must find what to call the height of collimation. Then after getting what to call the height of collimation, then you will deduct the staff reading of each point to, to get the reduced level of the station. Are we together? It means first you have to get or to find what we call the height of collimation. Then after obtaining what we call the height of collimation, you have to deduct, to subtract the staff reading of each point. So as to get the, I mean the read, I mean station readings of each of each leg. So let's see. Uh, for instance, uh, right here we have a uh, level. I mean the fixed point reading on the ground. It is one hundred. Then let's say. This it is a spirit level, see? Reading different stuff as you can see right now. It means because they were, they were starting to measure the first leveling stuff at point A, let's say right here it is eight together. Then we go, let's say here it is five. Let's say here it is six, see? Let's say uh, they have seven, they have maybe nine, you see? etc. maybe 10, you go 11. Then they want you to determine the elevation between point B, C, D, E, and F. Then how are you going to know the elevation of these legs? It means it's very simple. First, you have to find what we call the collimation height or the height of collimation. How are you going to find the height of collimation? It means you have to take the instrument reading plus the fixed point reading on the ground. Then let me explain mathematically. It means to get the height of collimation from there, to get what called the height of collimation, the height of collimation. So uh, let me insist on how to find the, uh, the elevation between this point, as I've said, by using the collimation method. It means first we have to, or you have to find what to call the height of collimation, see? So 
after obtaining the height of collimation, it means we have to subtract the staff reading of each point to get to get the uh, stations or the legs readings. You see. So how are we going to calculate the height of collimation? So to get the height of collimation, you have to take the fixed point reading on the ground plus plus the first staff reading. The first staff reading. It means by referring to our example right here, it means we have the fixed point reading on the ground shown by the benchmark. For instance, we have 100. It means that's the fixed point reading on the, on the ground. The datum point is 100 meter. Then we have to plus the first staff reading. It means this is our first staff reading. Are we together? This is our first staff reading. And remember, because we have right here the uh, this leveling instrument, it means this is backside and this one right here, as you can see, this one is our foresight. Are we together? This is foresight. This one is backside. This at the middle. This one, this one, this one. We call them the intermediate side. So right here, uh, we take the first staff reading, which is this one at point A. It read uh, eight meter from the ground. It means so to get the height of collimation, to get the height of collimation, as I've said, you take the staff reading on the. I mean the staff reading plus the fixed point reading on the ground. So you take one hundred plus eighty meter. Then you get. I mean plus eighty eight meter. Then you get one hundred and eighty meter. So height of collimation. I can write it uh, in a short as C, HC, height of collimation, is equal to 108 meters. So, to get the staff reading of each leg, it means to get the reduced level, the rise and fall in each leg, you have to subtract the staff reading of each point. So, we take the height of collimation minus the staff reading of each point. It means you take 100, for instance, to get point B, the reduced level at point B. It means uh, point B, you'll get, uh, you take one, the, the height of collimation minus the staff reading of point B, which is 5. Are we together? Which is 5. Then it will give 103 meter. Then you go point C. You take the height of collimation minus 6. See? 180, which is e, the height of collimation minus the staff reading, which is 6 meter. Then 102 meter. Then you go to point D. Point D, 108 meter minus the staff reading of point B, which is 7, 7 meter. So it will give 101 meter, you see. Then you go to point C, it means you take point, point D, point E. Point E, you take the, the, the height of collimation, which is 108 minus, minus the staff reading of point E, which is 9, 108 meter minus 9 meter, which will get uh, 99 meter. Then from there, uh, you have to stop at point D. Remember, <coughs> point B right now, uh, it is, uh, the point B, there is two uh, leveling stuff reading, I mean, not leveling stuff, the speed level which read at point B. As you can see, we have this one, the first leveling instrument and the second leveling instrument see so the leveling instrument a it read point i mean the st leveling stuff at point e as well as the level the speed level uh, b it read the leveling stuff at uh, point e so point e we call it as changing point so if you find the changing point then at the changing point you have to find the new height of collimation it means the second height of what of collimation. So, how are we going to find the second height of collimation? If I explained earlier, it means you have to take the staff reading, which is 10, plus the fixed point reading on the ground, which right now is how much? Is 99. Are we together? It means if we find one staff reading, see, uh, there are two spirit level which read two, I mean, the single leveling staff. It means you, that. Uh, staff or that point is known as what the changing point at the changing point you have to find the new height of collimation so by looking very careful at this diagram right here as I said we have the first spirit level which have read to 
this leveling stuff and we have the second spirit level this one it read this leveling stuff it means our leveling stuff at point e it is the changing point so because this it is a changing point it means we have to find the new height of collimation by doing what by taking the the uh, 60 point reading on the ground at point e which is 99 meter plus the first i mean the stuff reading of of point e which is 10 meter to get the head, the second height of collimation so this we we'll call it the first height of collimation so it means the second height of collimation you will take this one the the stuff reading which is 99 meter plus the stuff reading at point e which is 10 which is 10 meter so you get it is equal to 109 meter is the second uh, height of collimation then to get point f the leveling i mean the reduced level at point f then you take the height of collimation at this point which is 109 minus 11 so as to know a that there is rise or fall at point f it means point f right here is equal to the height of collimation which is 109 meter minus minus 11 meter which will give will be equal to um 90, 98, 90, 90, 80 meter. Are we together? Which will be equal to, yeah, which will be equal to 98 meter. Then from there, uh, <coughs> by summarizing, uh, uh, in, I mean, in this um, method of collimation, as I've said, the, you have to, to note the two important things or concepts. First, you have to find the height of collimation. Then after obtaining the height of collimation, to get the reduced level at each leg or station, it means you have to subtract the staff reading of each point. And how are you going to obtain or to get the height of collimation? It means we can obtain the height of collimation by taking the staff reading plus the fixed point reading on the ground. For instance, right here, I have taken a 100 meter plus 80 meter, which it is the stuff reading. So 100 meter plus this one, you get 108 meter. That is our first height of collimation. I mean, height of collimation. Uh, then you, start, you subtract the stuff reading of each point to get what calls the reduced level. And if you find a point where there is two, Split level. Have read that leveling stuff. For instance, at this point, as you can see, point E, we have this leveling stuff. It read this stuff. And we have this leveling stuff. I mean, split level. It read this stuff right here. So at point E, we call it a changing point. So in whatever changing point that you may find during um, calculation, I mean, calculating your reduced level, you have to find the second height of collimation, as I did in our example. Are we together? So, uh, from right here, I want to make a simple summary of what I, to I told you before that uh, we have what we call the back side and the fore side and the intermediate side. So, what are these? Let me summarize right here. Let's assume we have two levels. I mean, simple. For instance, let's say this is. See? Right here, it is the ground. Uh -huh. So we have this. Then we have uh, uh, the spirit level right here. We have the spirit level right here. See? Something like this. Then after this, you find another spirit level or leveling instrument right here etc you see as you can see right here let me explain something let's say uh here it is 50 meter this is point a uh then we have the readings i want to explain what it is how how or how are we going to 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 to, to know this is back side this is four side see we have a and b so listen to me very careful we have the Leveling instrument or the split level, this one, it read at point A. 
You see, point B, C, D, and E. So, I want to explain which leveling stuff it will present, for instance, the fourth side. Which leveling stuff it will present the back side, see? Or how are you going to know this is a back side while this is a fourth side? So, as you can see right here, we have the spirit level. So, assume we don't have this. This uh, leveling stuff at points B and C, we call them the intermediate sides. The intermediate side. While the first stuff reading this one, the first stuff reading it has what we call the back side. You see? Uh, and then you go, if these two are intermediate sides readings, it means right here we have what called the the four side. So these two we call them the intermediate sides. This one and this one. These are intermediate side, intermediate side. While this one is back side, this one is four side. By considering the first spirit level. Then let's go to the second spirit level. It means we have the second spirit level or the leveling instrument. It means right here, um, this spirit level, it read at point D, see? And it read also at point E. We don't have the intermediate site right here. We just have the back site at this point and the fourth site at this point. Are we together? Because uh, what I want to explain is sometimes you may be asked the Listen to me very careful. You may be given a question that you may be asked to find the reduced level. It means the rise and fall between point B up to E. And they may ask you to make what you call the, book, the leveling booking sheet. So in making the leveling booking sheet, we have to make sure that we show or we include both the back sites, the four sites, as well as the, the uh, intermediate sites readings. So it's very important to know all of this. Thereafter, we, ho we have what we call the height of collimation as well as the reduced level. What we get right there from the other example, for instance, point B, it read maybe this one, point C, we get this one. As you can see, we have 100, 100, 103, 102, 101, 99, uh, 109. Then it rises, then it falls. All of this, we call them the reduced level. So in the leveling booking sheet, we will also show what we call the uh, level, I mean leveling, and what we call the, the, reduced, the reduced level. So uh, I'm going to show the last example where we will be asked to uh, represent data in the leveling booking sheet, as well as we'll be asked to find what we call the reduced level between a certain point to the last point. Are we together? Okay, let's see the last example in our session today. Okay, uh, let's see the last question. Um, as you can see, we have the question right here. We have the diagram, uh, I mean, drawn right here. Um, and this is an example of uh, sample questions. Uh, remember, uh, most of the sample questions given or provided or asked right now, uh, most of them are competent questions. As you can see, uh, we have given our sample question, uh, we have the, the leveling profile, as you can see, and the, the ASCII calculates the reduced levels. Uh, they uh, put data into the leveling booking sheet. It means we have to take the data from the uh, leveling profile into the leveling booking sheet. So please, we use the collimation method to calculate what we call the reduced level. And what are the reduced level? This is the rise and fall between point C, B to point G. Are we together? It means the reduced level has the rise and fall between point B to G. Thereafter, we will see how to plot or to put data into the leveling booking, booking sheet. So, um, as I said earlier, that we have to use what we call the uh, collimation method to calculate the reduced level. And by using the collimation method, we have to calculate what we call the height of collimation or the collimation height. How, how, uh, how are we going to calculate the height of collimation? It means we will take the first staff reading right here. As you can see, we have 50 meter plus the first staff reading, which is 8 meter. So we take 50 plus 80 to get what called the height of collimation. Then from there, we will deduct. We will subtract the staff reading of each, of each station to get the reduced level at each leg. So if we take 50 plus 8, it means we will get 
58. Then 58 minus 6, to get the reading of at point B, it means you will get 52. 58 minus 5, we will get the reading at point C. Then we do the same to the other uh, leveling stuff reading. Then remember, as I told about, as I told you earlier about the what we call the uh, changing point. Then as you can see uh, clearly right here, um, I know you'll be able to identify or to determine what it is, the changing point, as you can see. Point E, this one point, this point right here, it is the changing point. Why? Because it has the leveling stuff, which uh, it is read by two uh, split level. We have this, the first split level, it reads this leveling stuff. And we have the second split level, it reads this leveling stuff. So this point E, we call it the changing point. As I, said, as I said earlier, that at the changing point, we have to find what we call the new height of what? Of collimation. Okay, so by making summary, or by showing how it is done, uh, so we have to first calculate the height of collimation. Height of collimation. Are we together, class? Height of collimation, you see? So, HC will get the Fixed point reading on the ground, as I said, which is 50, plus the first stuff reading, which is 8. It means we'll take 50 meter plus 80 meter. Then we'll get 50, 80 meter. It means this is our first, I mean, this is our first height of collimation. So we have to subtract, to reduce, I mean, to, to deduct the stuff reading of each point to get the reduced uh, levels on each station or at each station. So... To get the reduced level at point B, it means we take at point B. It means to take the, the height of collimation, 58 meter, minus the staff reading at point C, which is 6 meter. So we get 52 meter. Then we go at point C. Point C, we take it means 58 minus 5. See, 58 meter minus 5 meter. It means we will get uh, 53 uh, Meter. Then at point D, right here at point D, it means we take 58 minus 4. 58 meter minus 4 meter. It means it's equal to 54 meter. Then you go to point E. It means 58 minus 6. Point E, 58 meter minus 60 meter. Then you'll get uh, 50, 52 meter. So remember, as I said earlier, point E it is a changing point. So if we, you will find or we will find the changing point, it means we have to find the uh, another height of collimation. You remember? So right here, point E, point E, we call it the changing point. The change point. It means at the changing point, it means you have to find the new height of what? Of collimation. You have to find the new height of collimation. So the second height of collimation, it means, let us call this the first height of collimation. It means we will find the new height of collimation or the second height of collimation. Then we will take the fixed point reading on the ground, which is the fixed point reading at point E, which is 52. It means right here we'll have 52 meter plus the fixed point, I mean the staff readings. So 52 plus um, 10 so we take 52 meter plus 10, the staff reading, it means we will get 62 meter. This is our second height of collimation. So to get the staff reading at point F, it means, I mean at point E, this is point E. At point F, it means we will take uh, 62 minus 8. Are we together? Then it means point F, 62 meter minus 80 meter. This one, minus 8 meter. 62 minus 8, it means you will get um, is equal to 54 meter, this one. Then you will go at point G. It means you will have to take the height of collimation minus 7, which is point G will be equal to uh, 62 meter minus um, 7 meter. See, we'll give you uh, 50, 55. 55 meter. So as, as I've explained earlier, what we get this, uh, what we call the reduced level. Are we together? So reduced level, 
reduce the levels. It means rise and falls levels. Uh, is I've explained this one. These are what we call the, the reduced level from the first one to the last one. Then from there, uh, the last question, it asks us to put data into the leveling booking sheet. Okay, class? It means the question, I mean, the second question, it asks us to put data into the leveling booking sheet. So let's see how the leveling booking sheet is seen, okay? Uh, in leveling booking sheet, you have to have the following. In leveling booking sheet, you have to make sure you have the following. Uh, in leveling booking sheet, you have to make sure you have, uh, can I write here? Uh, I'm sure you can be able to see the leveling booking sheet. It means, let's see, this is a leveling booking sheet, see? Leveling booking sheet. So if this is our leveling booking sheet, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful on, on this point right here. It means we have, um, this column, see, uh, this is leg, leg means station, see, then we have the backside readings, it means we write right here, then we have the intermediate site, the, uh, the readings at the middle of the foresight and backside, then we have the foresights, okay, then we have the height of collimation, this column right here, then we have the reduced level, reduce the levels, then we have the distances, between the station, the distance between the, the stations. Please, uh, as I said, you have to be very careful because it is simple. It means uh, leg will refer to the station, see? A is a point A, B, C, D, etc. So it means we take leg is A, B. For instance, A, B. A to B, it's not a leg. A, it is the leg. A, B means the distance. As you can see at last here, we have the distance. A, B, it is the distance A to B. As you refer right here, the distance from A to B is 20 meter. So, right, 20 meter. Then, B, C. It means we have B, C. C, D. Then, B, C is how much? As you can see, B, C is 18. So, right here, 18 meter. C, D. C, D, 30. It means we have... 30 meter. Then you go um, DE is 10 altogether. Then you DE. DE it is 10 meter. Then from there we have EF. EF as you can see it is 8 meter. This one EF it is 8 meter. So you write 80, 8 meter. Then EF then FG. See? FG is 50 meter, 50 meter, are we together? I'm sure you can see right here, uh, AB will refer to the distance from A to B, but the leg we are talking about the station, it means I'm talking about A, B, C, D, E, F, this is our station, okay? So how are we going to write the data? It means we have to make sure we, we, we insert where there is backside to write at each station. It, for where there is intermediate site, we write which, which station there is intermediate site. Are we together? So by looking careful uh, to our to, I mean, profile right here, we know at point A, we have the, the back site. Then at point D, I mean at point F, we have the foresight. So remember this one. This one is, is our back site. This one is intermediate site. As I said, the readings between the foresight and the backside, we call them the intermediate sites. These are intermediate sites, you see? This one, be careful. This one is what called this one. This is our, is our foresight by considering this spirit level right here. Then from there, uh, we have this, the second spirit level. So by using the second spirit level, it means this turn right here, this one, this one, 
is your backside, okay, by using this split level. While this one is intermediate side, this one is your four side. Are we together? So it's easy like that. It means uh, at point A we have the backside, which is eight. So you write there. It means at point A we have backside, which is eight. This is point A. We have backside. You write it eight. Are we together? Then from there, uh, intermediate side at point A we don't have. Four side at point A we don't have. Uh, Head of collimation at point A we have. We take 50 plus this one. It is at point A. Then we write 58. The first height of collimation is at point A, which is 50. Height we have seen there. Then from there uh, we go on. Um, reduce the level at point A. It is 50. It was there. So you write it 50. This is our first reduced level. Then we go to point B. Point B, back side, we don't have. Back side, we have the intermediate side at point B, C, and D. So intermediate side at point B is how much? Is 6. So intermediate side point B, ta -ta -ta. C, C, ta -ta. 5, this one, ta -ta -ta. 4. See? 4. Then you find um, at point, e, point E, we have the four side. It means this is our point D. Point E right there, we have the four side. So you write the four side point at point E, which is equal to 6. Pa -pa -pa -pa. You write here, 6. Are we together? Then from there you go. Um, at point E, we have the four side. Then at point E, the same, we have the back side, which is 10. So you go at point E, we have the back side right here. So you write that here at point E, 10. We have the back side, this one, which is 10. It's really at point E. Then point F, we have the intermediate side, which is uh, 8. It means point F, we have the intermediate side, which is 8. You write there, 8. You see? Then you go at point G. It means there is point G right here. G, G, we have the, the foresight. The foresight is a point, point G, which is how much? Which is 7. So this is foresight, you write right here, 7, which is, is a point, at point G. Remember, um, this is 8 is at point F. This 8 is right here. Then this is point G, right here at point G. Then from there, you go back, you check if there are intermediate site. Uh, we have inserted the back site at each point. As you can see, back site is right here. Then we have another back site right here. It is right here at point A. In point E, as you can see, we have the, uh, the four site at point E. You see, the four site at here at point E. And the four site at point G, as you can see, at point E. This one is six. And the four site at point G is this one, seven. Then we, we have the intermediate site at each, at each point. Then from there, you have to write the reduced level at each point. Are you together? You have to write the reduced level at each point. We have, see, uh, we, we have seen at point A, we have 50 meters. It means at point C, at point B, we have, um, we have calculated there at, at each point. So we have to, to insert at point B, 52. It means 52 meter. At point C, we go 53. 53 meter. Point C, this one, 53 meter. Uh, point D, 54 meter uh, point e this one 52 meter 52 meter then uh, uh f 54 this one is f 54 meter thereafter we have um g g where's g this one 55 55 what meter are you together so this is what we call the leveling booking sheet leveling Booking sheet. See? So, uh, <clears throat> class, this is how, I mean, you have to be very careful. Uh, there is no uh, hard calculation as you have seen. I did not uh, use logarithm. I didn't um, use in uh, the much mathematical sound. I have just used the arithmetics, the plus and minus. Are we together? Then from there, this is our leveling booking sheet, as I told you. So uh, if you want to prove maybe you are correct, um, I mean, you have entered data correctly into your leveling book, booking sheet, you have to take the summation of backside should be equal to the last reduced level minus the first reduced level. Are we together? It means the summation of backside, 
this one, you take this one plus this one minus the summation of, so, uh, of foresight, which is this one minus, plus this one. This one plus this one is 18. This one plus this one uh, is 13. So if you take 18 minus uh, 13, you will get 5. Should be equal to the summation of the last, I mean, the, the, the difference of the last reduced level is the first reduced level. So if you take 55, this one is the last reduced level minus the first reduced level. So you take 55 minus 50, you get 5 meters. So you get this side is equal to the last side. Then we say this is the correct uh, booking, leveling booking sheet. Uh, okay, so uh, you are most welcome. As I've said, uh, survey is simple. As I've explained from the previous up to this point, um, uh, what I can say to you is um, uh, to take notes uh, as long as it is very important and make sure I do as long as many as, uh, as questions that you, you can be found somewhere, especially those nectar's questions. Uh, and remember right now, uh, we will based on competent questions, if I explained right here. So uh, let's take here is our end of our session. Until the next time, have a nice day. Thank you very much.